Hello class, Mrs. Tanga here. So for today, we are going to be doing a demonstration lab so that we can understand more why cells divide instead of growing indefinitely. So as we talked about in our lesson, we looked at certain reasons why cells, it's better for them to divide instead of growing until there's no more room to grow, all right? So for today's lab, what we're going to be doing is we're going to observe why exactly cells divide. Why is it better for cells to divide? Why is it better for the body if the cells divide? So by looking at some of this, um, by doing this demonstration lab, I hope that you'll be able to understand more why there's more efficiency for your cells to divide instead of growing indefinitely. So before we get into the demonstration, I want to make sure that everyone has a, their, um, their lab handout. So please make sure that you have that accessible. Make sure that you download that on Blackboard, from Blackboard, and we'll get right into it. So there are some questions in there in the beginning. I would like to make sure that you answer them. And then once you're ready, we're going to get into the lab. All right. So for this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to be using beets, like the tuber beets, you know, it's like reddish, dark, purplish, reddish beet thing. And we're going to use bleach. So what we're going to do is we're just going to recreate what would normally happen to the cells. So to explain to you what would happen or what I expect you to observe, we are going to be looking at how bleach penetrates through to get into the center of the beet. So the beet itself will be an, an analogy to a cell. And then the bleach will be something that would be a, an analogy for nutrients coming into the cell. I'm going to explain more on that in a little bit. But I just want to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. All right. So as you watch this video, you're going to be seeing the actual experiment that I did in my home. And what I did was I sped it up. So you don't have to watch it for 30 minutes, at least that lab experiment that I did. All right, so let's go and do this. Let's learn more about why cells divide instead of growing indefinitely. So here I have a beet cube, all right? So it's a cube, it has six sides, and I tried my best to make sure that each side it has the same length, width, and height, all right? So for this beet cube, I'm going to first measure and make sure I hope that you guys have your um, worksheets accessible. So here, I'm going to measure the side of each of the cube. So as on this, you can see that I measured each side as 2 centimeter. Okay, so A is the area. So the first thing we need to look for is what is the surface area of the cube? So using A, we have the formula 6, A to the power of 2. So what I want you to do is use your algebra um, skills. I want you to go and plug 2 onto the A and then square that and then multiply it by 6. We're also going to be calculating the volume using the formula A cubed. So what we're going to do right now is I would like you guys to calculate this, all right? And we're going to put that on the paper. After that, we're going to look at the surface area to volume ratio, all right? So I want you to simplify it. So I showed this in class, so I hope you're able to do that as well. So I want you to enter all of those data on your handout, all right? So I'd like you to pause this video and do their calculations and enter your data on your worksheet. Now, what I did was I got this same, I have the same cube. What I did was I cut this cube into eight parts. Ta-da! All right, so it's literally the same sized cube but I cut it into eight parts. So the cube on the left, if you look at the surface area, 
it would be equal to the total surface area of all of the eight cubes on the right, okay? So the surface area and the volume of the large cube would be equal to the total surface area and volume of each of this cube, all right? So I have eight cubes in here. So what I'm showing you right now is we're going to try and see if the function of a big cube would be as fast as that of eight individual cubes. So here I have all eight cubes, all right? So for each cube, the surface area and the volume would be the same. So I want you to calculate the surface area for each cube, but since they're all the same, you don't have to do the repetition on that one. So your formula is, all right, I'm going to show you in a bit. So we also need to look for the volume of each of the cube. This formula is the same as the previous one we looked at earlier. What we're going to do is we're going to look for the surface area to volume ratio. All right, so we're all going to calculate that. So as you can see, each of the cube has an air like each side length vol um, length width and height is one centimeter okay so what i want you to do is go back onto your worksheet and i want you to calculate the surface area the volume and surface area to volume ratio of each cube using a as one instead of two as the previous larger cube all right so I'm going to give you some time. I'd like you guys to pause this video and do your calculations and enter your data on your handout, please. So why are we doing this experiment? So the big cube on the left, we are going to treat this as one big cell, all right? So we're going to be looking at its function, its efficiency, compared to when we break that one big cell into eight smaller tiny cells, all right? So we're going to be looking at, okay, is one big cell functioning? Like, is it letting the nutrients go in and out the same amount as when you have eight small cells? Which one would be faster, okay? So to do this, we're going to be looking at the efficiency of the bleach going in to the, um, each of the cubes, all right? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to assume that the beets are the cell and the bleach, we're going to assume that that would be the nutrients entering the cell, okay? So this is an analogy. We're using the bleach to show you, okay, so nutrients has to go inside of your cells to keep your cells healthy. Bleach will act as something that will go into the cell, which is the beet, to show you whether it's going to be better if your cells are big or if your cells are small, but just divided. All right. So... Is it going to be efficient or is it not going to be efficient depending on the size of your cell, all right? So if the bleach enters into the beet, the beet actually turns white. It loses that color. So that would be a good indicator that there was an uptake or penetration of the bleach into the beet. So what we're going to do is we're going to give this about 30 minutes. I'm going to show you, but I'm going to speed that process up. So you don't have to stay and watch the whole process for the whole 30 minutes. I'm going to go and speed the process up, all right, at least the video. So we're going to compare the efficiency of nutrient. In this case, we're going to use the bleach, the nutrient uptake of the beet, okay? Will a bigger beet have a better efficiency of nutrient uptake? Or will smaller cells have a better uptake compared to a bigger cell? So that's what we're going to do. So here are my three containers with bleach. And I have the big, um, big cell on the far left. And then I separated the four smaller cubes. I'm going to put them on the bleach. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to put them in and then we're going to observe or then like I'm going to speed up the process so you can see what happens to the beets when you put them in bleach. All right. So I'm just going to put them in and I'm going to submerge them to make sure that they are actually each side has or are exposed to the bleach. All right. So here we go.
So after about 30 minutes, as you can see, these are how the beads look like now. It's not just kind of like purplish red. You can see that now they're covered with white stuff. So now what we're going to do is we're going to try and look at cross section. We're going to cut them through to see exactly what happened and what the bleach did to the beads. So after the experiment, these are how the cubes look like, all right? So they don't look the same as before. They are now covered with this white stuff on the outside. It's still the beet. It's just it removed the dye. That's what bleach does. If you get bleach on your clothes, it removes the color. So that's pretty much what happened. So what I did was to show you exactly how the bleach penetrated through i cut each of those beads okay so as you can see you can see the middle is still red the outside or the sides are white so to figure out how much bleach entered or penetrated through the beat what we are going to do is we're going to measure the existing colored part okay so prior the large beat had a length of two centimeters, but after this experiment, instead of two centimeters, the area actually went down to 1.7 centimeters. So what that means is the red color has decreased because the bleach has penetrated. Now, if we look at each of the smaller ones, it was originally one centimeter for the length, the width, and the height. But now, after the experiment, the red colored part is now just 0.6 centimeters. So this shows that the beet, the bleach, actually penetrated through. So this two are your after for the large beet and the small beet. And just to remind you, the before, okay? So for the large beet, the before, the, um, the sides were about two centimeters. And for the smaller beets, it was each side was um, one centimeter. Okay. So now from this data, I would like you to go and calculate further the needed information on the handout. So we need to find out what percent of the area changed and how much volume changed as well as a result of the bleach being penetrated and what we're going to do is we're going to compare um, the efficiency which one has the transport which one transported the bleach into the beat faster is it the small um, the small beat or the large beat and we're going to um, relate this to the cell so that's our demonstration lab so i hope you are able to complete all of the spaces on the data sheet and answer the questions and i hope that you are this lab has allowed you to understand better why cells divide instead of grow indefinitely so make sure that you finish this and submit this no later than friday this coming friday all right i'll see you on wednesday in class have a good day